discussion on pregnancy in Epstein's anomaly of the tricuspid valve. Epstein's anomaly of tricuspid valve was first described by Willem Epstein in 1866. It is characterized by distal displacement of the septal and posterior leaflets of tricuspid valve. Anterior leaflet is elongated and sail-like. A portion of the right ventricle is atrialized due to the distal displacement of the tricuspid valve. Right atrium is often grossly dilated. Right to left shunting occurs across a patent foramen ovale producing cyanosis of variable extent. Epstein's anomaly is one of the cyanotic congenital heart diseases in which survival to adulthood is common. Several studies have evaluated the outcome of pregnancy in Epstein's anomaly. Donnelly and colleagues reported on 42 pregnancies in 12 women with Epstein's anomaly. Pregnancy was well tolerated in those who did not have cyanosis or arrhythmia. Though the neonatal outcome was generally good, there was increased risk of prematurity and dismaturity in babies born to mothers with cyanosis. The authors concluded that maternal cyanosis or arrhythmia were indications for closer maternal and fetal observation. Another study by Connolly and colleagues from Mayo Clinic reported on 111 pregnancies in 44 women with Epstein's anomaly. 89% of the deliveries were vaginal delivery and 11% were cesarean section and 76% were live births. Birth weight of infants born to cyanotic patients were significantly lower. The study had also checked on the offspring of males with Epstein's anomaly. It was found that 6% of offspring of women with Epstein's anomaly had congenital heart disease, while 1% of offspring of men with Epstein's anomaly had congenital heart disease. This group of authors also concluded that pregnancy is well tolerated in women with Epstein's anomaly. In their study, there were no serious pregnancy-related maternal complications like maternal death, stroke, congestive heart failure, arrhythmia, or endocarditis. While the above two studies were in 1990s, a report from Japan in 2018 included 17 women with Epstein's anomaly who delivered between 1995 to 2015. Delivery was by cesarean section in 8 women including 9 pregnancies, while 9 women including 14 pregnancies underwent vaginal delivery. Elective cesarean section was done in those with significant heart failure or arrhythmias and when two or more of the following criteria were present. Cardiothoracic ratio 60% or more, moderate or severe tricuspid regurgitation, tricuspid regurgitation jet pressure gradient 35 mm of mercury or more during pregnancy. They found that cardiothoracic ratio and tricuspid regurgitation pressure gradient increased during pregnancy. NYHA functional class deteriorated from class 1 to class 2 or 3 in 5 cases during pregnancy. The authors advised monitoring of clinical and hemodynamic changes throughout pregnancy to minimize maternal cardiac risk and for selection of mode of delivery. Echocardiogram in a patient with Epstein's anomaly and severe tricuspid regurgitation. The mosaic colored jet is occupying almost the whole of the atrialized right ventricle and right atrium. Another previous report had 13 patients with Epstein's anomaly having 27 pregnancies and 21 live births from 1985 to 2011. Four of the patients had atrial septal defect and six had associated wolf parkinson white syndrome. Two patients had undergone closure of AST and one had undergone tricuspid wall replacement prior to pregnancy. In 17 pregnancies, patients remained in NYHA class 1 and had full-term vaginal delivery. Cesarean sections were done in 3. 20 of the 21 babies had good neonatal prognosis without congenital heart disease. One died due to prematurity. There were six spontaneous abortions in this series. Others concluded that maternal and fetal outcomes were good in patients with Epstein's anomaly and NYHA functional class 1. Tachyarrhythmias and cardiac failure must be looked for in pregnancy. 
Another smaller study had eight pregnancies in four women with Epstein's anomaly, all resulting in vaginal delivery. Two babies were delivered prematurely. One patient had right heart failure during early pregnancy. Another had arrhythmia during labor which was managed medically. Another patient had arrhythmia in postpartum period which was also managed medically. Others mentioned that when a woman with Epstein's anomaly reaches childbearing age, fertility is not affected even in cyanotic women. They noted that pregnancy outcome is usually favorable under close supervision of obstetrician and cardiologist. In addition to these studies, there are several single case reports of successful pregnancies in women with Epstein's anomaly in literature, though the potential risks mentioned above must be borne in mind. Careful monitoring of maternal and fetal status is needed. Pregnancies in those with cyanosis, arrhythmia and heart failure carry a higher maternal and fetal risk.